quite clearly the, the effect uh, which it has on children is, uh, must be catastrophic from a social point of view. Um, from a business point of view of running, the, of running British Rail Engineering, we've got a situation where we've got spare capacity in other works who can do the work which children is doing, and we intend to try and utilize that capacity uh, because we have got a lower demand. We haven't got the demand here to, c to fully fulfill the workload. The survival of a town of 12,000 people depends on that cool calculation. For 85 male jobs in 100 here are jobs with British Rail. It's very much a railway town, full of pubs commemorating railway pioneers and relics like the world's first purpose-built railway station. Because the rail works themselves are in a valley, they don't dominate the landscape, and there's a feeling of green spaces around the town which is quite different from the standard image of grey industrial Britain. Every mother, father, sister and brother really depends on children works. It's a heritage, it's like it castles and everything else. It belongs to the people, the children. Railway works, this is where it all began. Really, it's two different nations. Every closure always happens in this part of the country. It's a profit making industry, yet they're the only one that they're going to chop this industry at this end of the country. I don't understand it. But it happens no. in the north of England every time. Every time. If you live in the northeast of England, you're just used to this. It happens all the time. Why do you, why do you think that is? Well, because I wouldn't I like to say. Beyond Birmingham, they think we, we just cave to people. Whenever there's a recession in the country, Durham always seems to be the first to go into it and the last to climb out of it. The belief that the North East is taking a larger than fair share of the recession is more than just an off-the-cuff observation. It was echoed with authority when Durham regional unions and councillors from all the affected local authorities got together for a unique meeting to plan their response to the prospect of unemployment levels rising to 50% in some places. Nor did the leader of Children's Council believe that a rescue effort to buy in new jobs would do any good at all. Well, we know from experience that all government measures, all local government contributions have never kept pace with what was required to produce one job over the past has cost £10,000 per job. So having that in uh, the, the back of our minds, we are absolutely determined that Children Works will not close. This is Ernie Brown at the BBC Ready Food and News Desk. Mr. Sid Wheel, the leader of the Railwomen's Union, is due to arrive in Shildon in about half an hour to address... Now came the moment for the unions to bring out their big guns. There was good reason for Sidney Wheel to rush up to Shildon on a well-publicised visit to threaten a national rail strike over the closure. Counting the other engineering job losses British Rail proposes, 5,000 of his members are in the firing line, and he lost no opportunity when he spoke to the media of putting the blame on lack of government investment in the railways. Well, BR are the agents of the government, and they do what the government says, and if they cut off the money supply, the board can't do anything. And I'm hoping that Peter Parker will stand up and say what I'm saying, that he's not going to put up with it any longer, instead of leaving it to me. The NUR put this proposition to the railway board. There was a crowd of thousands waiting for him at the football field, and he gave them a speech to put fire in their bellies. Not only would he call out the whole NUR, he said, but he might well demand strikes of their allies, the miners and the steelworkers.